And so our, our mind is usually misunderstanding that uncomfortable means unsafe. And it's, it's hardly ever the truth. It's like uncomfortable just means you're on the edge of change. Uncomfortable means it's like you're, you're walking towards what everything you've ever wanted. How do you know when you're out of alignment with your business? Better question. How do you know if you're actually trying to get your business to do something that is not meant to do? You're forcing it in a certain direction. You're at, at odds with it. You have a toxic relationship with your business and you just aren't happy. You feel like burning it down. You're overwhelmed. You're burned out all the things. Like, how do you navigate that? Well, maybe it's time to become better friends with your business. I have an incredible episode here today. My friend Zach Rader is on the show. He's a breathwork facilitator, an intuitive healer, and just an amazing soul. He is going to walk you through a process that he put me through, and you'll hear the whole story many, many times about how to get in alignment and become better friends with your business so that you're actually in flow and your business and you or an alignment to do the things that it's supposed to do together. It might not be that you need to burn the business down. You might just need to change a few things or show up differently for that relationship. So before we dive into this episode, I would love to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to hit that little notification bell so that you know the next time we release an episode. And also, if you enjoy this episode today, I would be honored if you shared it with your friends, hit that little like button and shared a comment about what you loved about it. All right, let's dive in to today's episode with Zach Rader. This is, interview is a long time coming. I am so excited to have my friend, my dear friend, Zach Rader on the show. Zach, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So Zach and I have been friends, I don't know, a couple of years now, maybe two to three years. And from the moment I met him, Zach has had this like very calming presence in my life. And he's helped me through some really challenging moments. And just to give a little background, I'm, I usually do the intros and outros after the episode, but I met Zach in a healing community and under the, the pretext or context of him being a breathwork facilitator. And so he is just in general, a transformational healer. And I was going through something really challenging, which I spoke about, I've spoken about several times on this podcast, but I was in a very deep state of burnout and wanting to burn my business down and zach has been an integral force in helping me get back to into alignment with my business and to become a better friend to it so we're going to be talking a little bit more today about becoming better friends with your business especially if you're in one of those stages of where you just don't feel like you're in alignment or you built this thing and you're not sure where to go next this might get a little woo but we like that around here so Zach, I'm excited to talk to you about this. <laughs> so before yeah, we, sure. yeah. So before we dive in, why don't you give everyone just a little bit of insight into your journey as a breathwork facilitator and healing work? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, um, you know, eight, at 18, 19 years old, I, I, I knew there was something out there. I was looking for something, and uh, I, nobody was giving me a good answer yet that I had found, and so I became just a really hardcore seeker and, you know, very 18, 19, I found breath work and meditation. And then, you know, I've done, done lots of, lots of healing work, uh, became, uh, became lots, became a, an energy healer and, um, you know, and, and eventually started facilitating breath work as well. So that's kind of all, you know, all the things that I probably forgot about too, that, that all play a big part of that as well. That's awesome. Yeah. So if you ever have an opportunity to go to one of Zach's breathwork sessions, jump on it immediately. He travels all the time. Uh, as we're recording this interview, he's actually in Spokane close and he's going to Coeur d'Alene tonight. So he's all over the United States. Do you travel internationally to do breathwork? I have, I haven't been since COVID. I've just been yeah. sticking to the U S but, um, but we'll see. I, was, I got an invitation for uh, the UK that I'm like considering. So yeah, maybe I'll bring you down to Costa Rica or something. We'll do like yeah, a Costa Rica sounds really nice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mal will come too. Mallory is Zach's wife, who's also an incredible healer. He's she's amazing. We just love Mallory. Um, so I wanted to kind of dive in. So you've been in the healing space for a long time and you've done a lot of work with people who, you know, maybe experience deep trauma and trauma can mean anything. So I'm going to actually ask you what your definition of trauma is before I ask you the next question. 
You, you, oh, going to trauma first. Yeah. What's your, what's your definition of trauma? Like, how would you describe that? Cause I think a lot of people think of trauma as like something really, really severe, but it's not always, sometimes it can be, but it's not always that. I probably answer this different every single time that, that I, that I, that I look at this, but right now, like, like trauma is, is a place where, where we lost a part of ourselves or, or maybe where a part of us got stuck. And, you know, so it, it could be from a physically traumatic experience. It could be from, you know, a sentence that our parents said, right? Like, why are you wearing that? And then we internalized it to, and it, and it became this thing that, that I'm wrong or that I'm not good enough. And, and, and that I, I got stuck or, or lost a piece of myself there. So it's interesting. Yeah. Cause I was at a, an event this weekend and, and the one, one of the women was explaining this experience that she had when she was in kindergarten. And it's like literally passed on to her to, and she created this connection between the experience and what happened is that she's evil and it was so unrelated. It's amazing what our mind does to create meaning yeah. to stories to like events in our life. Right. Yeah. 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 Our, our minds are meaning making machines that are making meaning all of the time. And when we realize that like, it's, it's all just made up. Yeah, it is, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm making the whole thing up. Why don't I make something up that feels better then? Yeah. Gosh, how do you break that pattern? Maybe we'll get into that today. That's that's an interesting thought. So there's this thing called a trauma bond. Do you want to explain like what that is and how that sometimes it can be really helpful and sometimes it can be harmful. But especially when you have a trauma bond in relation to your business, which a lot of people started a, start their creative businesses out of some sort of trauma or reason or story, like there's a reason behind it, right? So if you could describe what a trauma bond is and how it can be helpful or harmful in business, that would be awesome. Well, it's, 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 again, it's like where, like, so, so where we went through some, some sort of traumatic experience or, or long-term or, you know, it's almost like that creating an attachment from that, from that place of, of, of disconnection or separation. And so, so it's kind of, so it can be an unhealthy attachment, right? Yeah. The thing is, it, it's like when we realize that our systems are always seeking wholeness, like, like our systems are always, always seeking to heal. And so while we look at it, it's like, oh, don't make trauma bonds. Or it's actually like, if, if you are making a trauma bond, like let, let that be the, the, the window or the avenue into, in, into yourself, into the healing. And so the thing that, that you know, I, I definitely did, that I've seen so many business owners do, it's like, we, we almost put ourselves in situations to recreate the experience that's going to bring up the feeling or, or that trauma, whatever is still stuck in our system. You know, we see the example of it's like, you, you know, the people that still haven't worked out, say their, their mom or dad issues. Yeah. And then they start dating the people with those qualities, right. They start calling in those partners and it's like, we're, we're seeking wholeness. And, and so it's, as, as we were talking about, like in a business way, it's like my business is bothering me. So I'm just going to shut down my business and start a new business where it's like what your business is poking at, though, is is in there. And there's just going to be a new vehicle or, or a new business or a new partner that's going to show us that place um, where there's trauma or that we're still stuck. Unless you heal it or transmute it. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> so in, in many of these situations, it's like you know, these things that we're trying to get rid of so many times, it's like, I want to get rid of this because it's making me feel in, you know, uncomfortable. Mm. I don't like the way I feel about it. And it's like, well, you, yeah, oftentimes I'm sure we've all seen, it's like, oh, cool. I left the thing that made me uncomfortable. I went to a new thing and now it's bothering me too. It's the same thing. Right. That's so interesting. I've heard you say this a million times, but I've never put that like, now it's like, finally the connection is coming. It's like, the, you're still the same person. It doesn't matter. It's how you're showing up in business isn't going to change until you change. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and if we look at like the, the thing that's bothering me or the thing that is the thing that's uh, stressing me out or overwhelming me or however that's showing up, it's like, what if that is here to serve me? Yeah. Right? What if, what if my business that's doing this th the thing again that I don't like, it's like, we try to solve the problem so that we don't have to feel the thing. But instead, if we reverse that, it's like, let's feel the thing first. And then let's see if the problem's still even, right? Sometimes if the problem's still even there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really interesting. So recently, I was like in um, doing some work on myself. 
And Jason said to me, like, what is it about this time? Our friend Spencer, like, actually posed this question to Jason. He's like, what happened in September and October in your life that, like, is creating all this trauma? Because uh, you were very integral in this with me. But last year, I went through a really dark night of the soul. I called you up. You were, like, driving from Denver or something back to Sedona. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, like this, my business needs my attention, but I just want to burn it down. And like, it's affecting my relationship so much that we might like decide to like move on from each other. And I don't know what to do. And I just felt so desperate. And you said something to me that was really interesting in that moment. Like whatever is supposed to work out, like if this relationship is supposed to work out, it will. Like, you don't have to worry about that. Like just be in the moment. And I was like, mind blown, but then I'm like, but I wanted to work out like I had a lot of control issues around that thing, <laughs> around the thing at the time. But the bigger thing with my business is that I went through this whole pattern because I didn't, I hadn't realized the connection between what was going on with me in September of October, because every September of in October, I go through this pattern of feeling very stressed and I go into workaholic mode and I don't know why, but I feel like I, I have to keep working harder in order to make something work. And it's like, there's not even really a defined goal. And I don't know what's going on and it affects like everything in my life. It affects my team. It affects my business. It affects my relationships and all those things. And so you helped me. And part of that process was a process that you put me through called like, basically that we're now calling like how to become better friends with your business. So why don't we kind of like d dive deep into what that looks like? Because you just spoke about this at our momentum retreat and it was amazing. And I haven't told you this, but like the majority of the, like everyone loved all the speakers and everyone, but they're like, Zach, like that thing about the, how to become better friends with your business thing is like, just like really landing with me. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about that. First of all, like, where did this really come about? Like, I, I know that I'm not the only person you've probably done this process with or something like this. I mean, I think it probably came out many of my processes uh, come about through my own <laughs> through my own yeah. experience and, and and process you know if we if we think about our life as relationships mm -hmm. right we, we get we get that we have relationships with other human beings yeah and and we realize it's like you know there's again like there's there's ways to have a healthy relationship but but we also when we start to realize it's like, oh no, I very much have a relationship with my business, right? I very much have a relationship with my body. I very much, it's like all of these other aspects, you know, my products, my customer, it's like, like all of these are relationships. And when we start looking, I found that most business owners, it's, it's you know, they were treating the business as a tool to, to get someplace or to make money or whatever. And it's like, if any of us treated one of our friends that way, this yeah. is just Tracy and I'm just using her to make money. Like if yeah. I was like, we wouldn't have a good friendship or a good connection and so it's really it's like an abusive if, relationship totally yeah and you know i i found that i had abusive relationships with my business and with my body for sure i've asked i, I used to be a professional athlete and uh, i've i've asked other professional athletes it's like have you ever met a professional athlete that has a healthy relationship with their body <laughs> and so we're like nope Oh, they don't. My brother was a former professional athlete that you guys just keep pushing yourself. He had yeah. like eight knee surgeries and he's still like out there on the AstroTurf playing football, trying yeah. to become a pro football player. And we're like, when is enough enough? Like you might not be able to walk soon. And totally. he decided to quit. Like he made a really, he played pro for a little bit, but he decided to quit because he wanted to have children and wanted to be able to play with his kids. And like, that was a big thing for him. Yeah, he's back and, at it. He's like doing competitive stuff again. <laughs> well, and, and you realize, and, and again, it's like the, you don't necessarily realize it at the time, but later on, it's like, oh wait, um, I would have treated my body better. Like I would have had a better relationship with my body if if I knew what I was doing, if I had more awareness there. And yeah. so, and so, this is an invitation to just have more awareness of of the relationship with our business, or you know, and our body, since we're talking about it. But it's like if we look at the way that we're speaking about it and how we're relating with it, it's like, um, you know, does my business like me? Am I being a good friend to it? It's like, yeah. are we working together or are we working in opposition? Are there places where we aren't on the same page? Right. And really getting in tune with that because it's like when, when I'm on the same page as my business, it's like, we get to fly. 
like you know things that that's when we hit flow that's when things happen that's yeah. when opportunities come in that are just like i didn't even know that was possible it's not this like pushing it uphill anymore fighting against it yeah i mean there's so many directions that we could go with that but like what are some of the like if someone is really struggling with their business right now and they are not in flow with it i mean mm -hmm. it feels like a I feel like actually for the first time in a very long time after this weekend, like in insane flow with mm -hmm. the direction of the company and all that stuff, but it's taken a while. Cause I think that I was really fighting against myself and like my demons and trying to make this business be something that it maybe wasn't or like force it into, you know, I think I had to come to a place at a certain point because Jason said to me, you know, like, don't your friends piss you off sometimes? And I was like, yeah, and it's annoying. And then I was going through this whole friend thing where I was like trying to build community here and it was challenging for me. And so for me, I had to reframe it. Like I want to treat my friend like I treat my dog because I love my dog and I have truly unconditional love for that dog. Like the dog can like, she like eat up my expensive shoe and I still, and I'm so pissed, but I'm like, still love her. And I'm like, well, it's my fault for leaving the shoe out. So it's like, <laughs> whatever. But what are some of the guiding questions that we can walk people through who are really feeling out of alignment with their business or they they want to get into that flow state with their business? Yeah, yeah. When you, you said something really just quickly in there, it was like I was trying to force my business to be something. Yeah. Right. Sure, and like yeah. if anyone, if, if we've ever, if, if, we've, if, if we have ever experienced like someone trying to force us into being something, we don't like it and we no. don't want to go where we're trying to go. Yep. And so that that's a big piece right there but i would say like where there it's like notice notice the places that we get challenged or triggered right like what is it's like if if i think it's like oh my business is not making enough money okay well well what's what what do i feel about that mm. what's, what's, what's really going on in here because you know really if i really get down deep into that it's like oh wait i'm running from lack and scarcity again i'm trying to to, to make the business create a create a, a scenario to where i don't have to feel that okay where it's like the the magic is actually to feel the lack and the scarcity and then transmute it yeah like you know spend some time with it because that's it's like when we have when we have a feeling that, that that's uncomfortable, it's usually just a feeling that we haven't spent much time with yet or that we haven't that we haven't really got to know. It's often like our mind keeps hijacking it. Right. Our mind. It's like our minds. Our mind's job is to keep us safe. And so safety means, you know, things are comfortable. And so it's always trying to find like comfortable and comfortable is often keeping everything the way that it is. Mm. And so our, our mind is usually misunderstanding that uncomfortable means unsafe but that's not the truth and it's it's hardly ever the truth it's like uncomfortable just means you're on the edge of change uncomfortable means it's like you're you're walking towards what everything you've ever wanted like that's going to be a level of uncomfortable in there it's like whatever that is whether that's more love or more money or wh whatever that is it's like there's always going to be like that threshold of, of, of discomfort of stepping into the new level of receiving yeah. or the new level of, of, uh, being or expressing whatever that looks like for, for each person. What if you could just train your mind to like be comfortable with the discomfort uh, it's... And, and acknowledge that that was actually the thing that was on keeping like the precipice of the next big thing. Totally. I mean, my mind is like, I, if, if I find a place where I'm uncomfortable, I'm, I'm so excited about it now. Like, I don't, I don't want to solve it. I don't want to make it go away. It's like, I'm going to spend some time really being with, with what I'm feeling right now. It's like, you know, Oh, this is intense. Or this is big energy. Or this is like, okay, I gotta, I gotta get bigger to make more room for this. It's like, there's so much, there's so much magic in that. And so, mm -hmm. you, you know, I've been, I've been doing it for a while. So it's like when, you know, when the, when the trigger comes or, or whatever, it's like, there's, there's also this incredible excitement. Cause it's like, you know, what else would make me feel like this, you know, than this perfect situation right here. And it's also amazing how we go to the worst case scenario. It's like, we're in a situation and then we're like, all, you know, it's like my business isn't making enough money, like to pay my bills. And then that brings you to like, I'm going to be homeless or something like that. You know, it's yeah, like yeah. you go yeah. to like such extremes that it's like 
you're, it's not even like realistic where the brain will take you. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I noticed for that too, the worst case scenario, it's like, well, my mind is always doing that every time we're on the edge of like something new or some change. Yeah. And so I just started to expect it. Right. Okay. I'm going to do something new. Okay. Mind, give me the worst case scenario. Like, like not that it's a serious thing because those things have never happened. Exactly. Like right? I've never had one of those, those worst case scenarios. It's like they never happen. And so I started turning it into a game where I was expecting it. It's like, Hey, give me your best one. Right. Yeah. And, and again, it's like when we are, when we're willing to receive something, when, when we're, when something is invited, it's, it's a totally different time than when something is, is resisted or controlled or managed. Exactly. Exactly. So what if, you know, what about the case of someone who actually their money is making, their business is making money, excuse me, but the demands of the business are like basically like causing extreme burnout or burning them into the ground. Like what, how would you address that kind of scenario? Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. That's again, that there's, there, there's a fear under there too. Right. Yeah. Okay. If I stop doing this, I'm going to lose it all. And it's like, yeah. I, I think for all of us, it's like, if we really, it, it's business is so interesting. It's like, we, we reward like the unhealthy, like, you know, we're talking about the professional athletes having the unhealthy relationship with their body. And it's like, that's celebrated this unhealthy relationship with like business and money and all of these things. It's like, oh, you know, people are celebrated for working a hundred hours a week. And it's like, yeah, but that burns, that's like, that doesn't serve any other part of your body. And that's actually wrecking all of these other areas. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the person that's like, I'm making a bunch of money, but it doesn't work for me. It's like, let's find what does work for you. Cause that's the most important thing. Right. So getting so to a place do, of, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we do let go of a piece of it or we bring in a partner or it's like, again, it's, it's like finding the alignment. Cause it's like every, the, the alignment is the most important. If we don't have the alignment, it's like things get crunchy. Yeah. So my signature, my first talk that I did at the retreat was all about creative alignment and getting your business in alignment with your personal life. Because I think that's something that we all get, can get detached from if we're not paying attention to it. And one of the questions that you asked me to ask my business back, back in that time, you know, I feel like I still call you up and being like, Zach, this is going on. And then you're asking me some great questions was ask your business what it needs. Can we dive a little bit deeper into that and how someone could like really tap into the energy of their business and like listen and acknowledge what the business needs instead of approaching it, how the business can serve the business owner? Yeah, 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 yeah. As, as I'm sure everyone has, has noticed, it's like the business totally has its own energy. It's some, maybe its own personality. And what are the ways that we can get to, and what are the ways that, that each one of us can find to connect with that in a deeper way? And so I don't know, I don't think that's going to be the same for everybody, right? Some people are going to, you know, it might be a visual process. Some people are just like, wow, I can just feel, my, I can feel my business when I connect with it and feel when something is off for it or when something is off. And so it's, it, it's like finding, it's like finding the way to connect with your business, right? And then we can ask it questions. Right. Does it like where we're going? Is it happy with me right now? What does it need? What would it like to see? Like, you know, does it, does it want to go in this direction? Is there any, are there any parts of the business that it's ready to let go of or, or make some transition or, you know, maybe, maybe get rid of some personnel or bring on some new ones. And it's like, yeah. like we start like being a partnership with the business rather than, you know, a master and a slave. And we, and we start to bring partners and it's like, and, and again, we get to find greater alignment with each other and just opens up all kinds of beautiful possibilities. Yeah. So jot those questions down because asking those questions will change your life. If you're able to sit in the stillness, I think the problem sometimes is that we don't sit long enough to like really contemplate them. We're like, want to ask a question and then like move on to the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and there's a piece of like the, the slowing down because yeah. it's really hard. Again, if someone is stressed out, if they're going hundred miles an hour, it's like, it's really hard to slow down enough to be able to connect with the business or, or our friend. It's like that, that connection comes from when we get to slow down and when we open. So of course I should probably talk about breath, right. When we're taking yeah. 
when we're finding like yeah just just a deep soft relaxing breath and and every time that we do that it's like i talk about using the breath to to relax the body and every time that we relax the body it's like we become more aware mm. the, the more that we relax the more that we can feel and so every time that we the more that we can relax the more the more we find our intuition yeah and so it's so important to to slow down the body to to really slow down and 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 that's where we make decisions from. That's where we find out what's true or not. Because running a hundred miles an hour, it's kind of like you're just the we're we're just at the mercy of of whatever our crazy mind is doing at the time. And so, uh, I'd say slowing down is, is especially for you know those that are going so fast in business. It's like slowing down is where you're going to find your answers. Okay, so I remember like when you were doing your talk at the retreat, you're like every so often you'd be like, okay, and breathe, okay, and breathe, like. I feel like a lot of times the reason why we feel anxious is because we aren't breathing. 100%. Have you heard that quote? Like fear is just anxiety. Or fear is just excitement without the breath. Yep. Yeah. yeah for sure. Pearls or whatever. It's like one of my favorites. And if you notice, like if you have a practice of meditation or just you've, I think one of the reasons, so this is a really random story, but it, it's relevant here. When I was in my twenties, I used to like socially smoke and I had a commute from my home in Santa Monica to Nordstrom in the West side village, whatever that was. And, you know, it take like sometimes 20 minutes because the traffic sometimes a little bit more. And I remember just like sitting there, like one of the ways that I would calm down before and after my shift would be to smoke a cigarette. And I'm like, I didn't like smoking anymore and I didn't want to do it anymore. So I quit. And one of the tips that someone told me to like, get a straw and breathe in and out of the straw. And it mimics that same experience of smoking. And I feel like sometimes that's the reason why people probably smoke is because they're actually breathing, even though it's toxic stuff that they're putting into their body or like why people vape or why people, you know, do some of those things is because it's a moment to like actually take a deep breath mm -hmm. and let it go. So what if you could just mimic that, you know, in your day to day? Yeah. 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 And, and yeah, stress, anxiety, overwhelm are usually just messengers letting us know that we're not breathing. We're not present. And we're yeah. usually believing something that's not true. And, and there's, and there's a, you know, a, I, I always tell people when I'm speaking to a room, it's like, you can, when, when we're talking about something uncomfortable and again, like one of the ways that, that we check out all the time, it's like, okay, something uncomfortable. Again, we, we, we check out, we go off in a thought, we go someplace else. It shows up in our breath is, is held or, or shallow. It shows up in our body as tension. And so again, it, it's like learning to spend more time breathing and relaxing and uncomfortable you know, topics, questions, scenarios. It's like, uh, I remember having this, this, this really powerful experience. This was back in the day when I used to pay all my bills with where you had to write, write, write a check for all of the bills. Mm -hmm. And I realized one day that I was like, I, you know, I was just locked down. I was holding my breath the whole time. And I, and I realized like, oh my gosh, it's like, there's like so much, there's so much fear. There's so much tension in this, in this idea. There's this idea that, that I'm writing these numbers on paper and now I have less than, or now I, now I'm not enough or whatever. And so my practice got to be, um, from, from then on, it was like the next month. It's like bill paying time was my meditation time. Mm -hmm. And so the most, the most important piece was that I was breathing that I kept my body relaxed and open and that I felt everything that I was feeling as I was writing these checks. And it was a fascinating experience because it was like a very short period of time. It was like, you know, a couple months and it was like already, you know, more money was coming in and wow. like these opportunities opened up. And so it was like that process was showing me that I wasn't present for, for dealing with my money there. Or sometimes when people are looking at their bank accounts and it's like, oh, they, they tense up like yeah. that. And it's like, hey, there's, there's the trauma, right? If we can look at the numbers, if, we, if those numbers don't look the way that I want to, them to look, if I can be with those numbers and relax and open my body and feel all of the things that come up when I'm feeling that, it's like, we're, we're working through that old trauma and then my bank account doesn't have to look that low again or, or, or exactly. whatever that is. Exactly. Yeah. This is true. That's, that's an incredible thing. I feel like the second you start to shift the energy and you don't have that same, like a negative relationship with your business and you're back in alignment or with the money or all the things, 
so much opens up. I remember when I first met you, it was like shortly after COVID and you had been a breathwork facilitator who like primarily did in-person events. And I remember you were talking about like your transition and you're like, yeah, I just like put it out there. And I was, you know, asked for guidance and it, it worked out. Like I didn't, you know, cause that could have like really destroyed you. What, what was happening in that time and how did you call in something to just like support you where you were? Yeah, it was like, that was really cool. Cause I was, yeah, I was looking at that and it's like, wow, logically we're looking, it's like, looks like I'm going to have to shut down a huge piece of my business for who knows how long. And, and so I spent time, like, I, I was like, yeah, this, I went through all of the things. All of, yeah. It's like, yeah, I might lose my house and I might have, who, I, who knows what we're going to have to do. I might like lose everything and, and feeling all of the, the things that came up in that you know, it was really, I actually didn't ever try to, to build anything new in that. It kind of just, uh, things just worked. Yeah. Just worked <laughs> I out. No, I have no idea how, how they just worked. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. And, and, and that was, and then, and, you know, that was, again, that was a deepening because again, it's like, I just know it's like, you know, I, I, I just, I have such a trust in the universe that it's, it just keeps Every, everything, I, I know that everything that comes into my experience, it's like, it's here to serve me. And how, you know, how can I keep receiving the, the next piece? Yeah. So I highly recommend that you go to one of Zach's breathwork classes and head on over to zachrader.com. He is an incredible soul and you are just going to love your experiences with him. And if you are someone who wants to work deeply with Zach on a regular basis, Zach is going to be coming into our community and doing mindset work with our momentum program and my top tier inner circle mastermind. So if you're interested in learning more about that, head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash momentum and fill out an application today and join us for our momentum program. It's an incredible group. It's a 12 month program that is designed around expert training, individual support, one-on-one -on -one coaching and retreats and events and experiences like Zach suggested. So I'd love to invite you into that community. It is amazing. It's an amazing group of multiple six and multiple seven figure business owners who are up to big things, who are scaling their businesses and growing like crazy. So if that sounds good to you, head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash momentum and check out what the program's all about. Ciao for now.